All right, guys, we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, so today we're going to be taking a look at um, Canva basics. OK, so this is going to kind of kickstart our entire um, series that we're going to do of butts, beagles and babies. Um, and so we're going to use this kind of as a launching point. So um, thank you guys for joining me today. And then also, just so you know, um, if you need assistance in the future, um, you're probably going to hear me saying this in the recording of, thank you for joining us for the recording, because I'm going to just direct you to this. <laughs> um, because this is, again, the launching point. So I want you to become familiar with Canva. Um, and then I'm not really going to spend too much time in the next sessions talking about how to do specific things. So this is this is your one shot to see how to um, change text and how to change fonts and how to size things and do those little things like the how the actual user information for Canva. Um, and then we're going to go into our listing presentations and our business cards and all of those fun things in the next sessions. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm actually gonna close the door because I just realized I left it open. So one second. Okay. All right. So welcome again. Um, Canva is a free website. So this whole series of, again, butts, beagles, and babies is centered around Canva and free marketing. Um, I don't like this fixed costs. None of us really like fixed costs. That's we're all in business for ourselves. And so where we can save a dime, we're definitely going to do that, right? You can get so much out of Canva just in the free version. And you can see here, it's trying to push the paid version on me because I do not have it. So anything that I'm showing you is going to be um, the free stuff. If you want to get the um, paid version, you absolutely can. Um, there are definitely benefits to that, but we're gonna look at the free version. Um, so first of all, I know I updated my name um, of the of this because we're trying to create a brand. It's all about marketing, how you can kind of push yourselves. And you know, there's the three things that sell: butts or boobs or sex or whatever. And I'm not condoning any of this. I'm just telling you technically what works, right? Um, dogs and babies. That's the joke, right? So really, should you be promoting? those things, I don't know, that's your business. I'm not gonna tell you how to market yourself. I'm gonna show you how you can, but you create your own content. Um, so long as it is uh, in deep or <laughs> uh, regulations. So um, I know I joke about that, but like really, Cindy says this all the time, that you want to make sure that you are doing 80% of your actual life and 20% of your real estate life. So that's kind of also where I'm playing on that. We want to see pictures of your kids. We want to see pictures of your dogs. We don't want to see pictures of your butts. But, you know, you want to be putting yourself out there, making yourself more likable, um, and then also mixing real estate in. So we're going to talk about that throughout the series. Um, but again, today, we're going to get started with showing you what Canva can do for you. So um, as soon as you come on here, you'll create an account if you haven't already. And you can kind of come on here to see all the different things. You could create a logo if you want to. You could create a presentation. Um, if I type in stuff, it'll find you stuff as well. So if I type in Facebook, now I see I have a Facebook ad option. I have a Facebook app ad option. I could type in event. Here's an event cover. Here's a birthday event cover. Um, so it's fairly intuitive um, if you wanted to do business cards. You can do that. Oops, you spell cards correctly. Business card, there's a square business card. There's a really a ton of different options for you. So let's take a look at, um, we're going to do a logo. We're going to get started with creating your brand. Now, of course, we did just um, get an amazing logo of Coastal Town Realty. Um, so I'm going to show you how to play around with that too. If you wanted to create your own logo or just in general, this is a cute little square to kind of get started. So for this, um, I want to show you how to add stuff in general. So as soon as you create a design, 
um, you saw that I kind of clicked into something. So I clicked into either this here, you can keep scrolling, you could type in whatever you're looking for. And when it opens it up, it takes you typically to a blank design unless you have opened up a specific template, which we'll show next. But as for right now, I just wanna start with a very clean slate. So I have this brought up and um, it says templates and then styles. So you can see there are two different options. This is actually a newer feature if you haven't played with um, Canva in a little bit, this is a newer thing that they have. So on templates, you can see they have like recently used if you've kind of played around with things. And then they have these all results. And you can kind of scroll around and see. So say you're wanting to, you know, create your a team name or just in general, um, you can kind of find like, I want to do Christy Holmes or something like that. Then I can kind of come around and see some examples, get that noggin working of what I want to do. If I want to pick any of these, I just click into it. I do want to point out if it has this crown, it is the pro version. Again, since we're doing the free version, I'm going to avoid the ones with the crowns. If it has a money sign, that means there's something in the design that is going to cost you a dollar. Um, and you can pay that dollar um, or you can exchange it out. Um, but either way, a dollar or a money sign means there's something that costs in the image, in the template. Um, no, thing, no little anything means that it's completely free. Okay. So here's these, I could click into one of these if I like it. I'm gonna to toggle over to styles and this will show you all of these templates. It used to be down on the side, um, but they've actually thrown it up on here. So I can click into all of these. It kind of gives me font sets, color palettes, those types of things. So I'm gonna click a style. Come on. Mm, 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 mm. Come on. No, no. Best laid plans. Hopefully it's still recording. I think my internet's kind of gone for a second. Okay, <laughs> we're back in business. So templates, I'm gonna click a random one on here. Uh, let's do, 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 let's do this one. And I'm gonna click that. Cute, okay. Fabulous. So um, I now have selected an image. If I wanted to do both pages, I could apply a second page. I'm only going to apply the first one because I'm just showing you the basics of this. Um, plus a logo only really needs to be one page, right? So if I wanted to change around styles, I could click, click color palettes and it's just going to give me a bunch of different options. This feature is really good if you create one design, say a Facebook page or a Facebook um, post that you're going to post continually. Um, and you can literally just change it by clicking that button one time, save it, post it. Next time it's up, click it again. Now it's a different color, throw it on there. Um, so that's a really cool feature to do, um, especially if you, you know, if you're just trying to be quick. Um, and every time you click it, it changes a little bit, right? So um, that is the styles and the templates. I'm just gonna work my way down this row here, okay? So elements is where you can search for stuff to add, whether it is a chart, um, you can add uh, pictures, graphics, um, moving stickers, videos, tons of different things. So it's, let's take a look. So you can see they give you little options. These are things that I commonly search, apparently. Um, these are my recently used um, lines, shapes, graphics. So that I, if I click something, it just pops right up. Okay. Um, and again, it's kind of going based off of my recent searches. So recently I was looking for swirls. So now it's coming up with like these little swirly cues. Um, stickers. So... If I was creating something for Facebook, that's really cute. Look, I've got that on there. That would be the easiest thing ever. If I literally just made that sticker, put Christy Hall on it, you know, love Christy Hall or something like that and post that on Facebook, like so quick. Um, but these little stickers are there. 
Now remember with a sticker, because you saw it was moving, right? That's not going to be an image. That's gonna be a video. All right, so we're gonna come back to how to download and what to download and all that. But we're gonna keep moving through. Your photos are right here. So again, you can see common things that I've been looking up was like backgrounds of stuff. But if I wanted to look up like house, <clears throat> here are my photos for a house. And once you click it, it just pops up on there, okay? You can change the size of it by grabbing the corners. And this is for anything, grab the corners. If you wanna change the ratio or the actual shape of it, you're gonna grab these little guys here, okay? Just like you would in other stuff. Now I've made it a square, now I've lengthened it. This is cropping it, okay? So let's pause on the photos and kind of look at this a little more. So you saw I was moving around. Now I can also crop. So I changed the shape of it. I wanna center this thing. So I clicked crop and I can move this around within it. It gives me guidelines so I can center the things that I need to. I like the look of that, great, done. All right, so now my image is centered. If I wanted to make it the size of the whole page here, I'm just going to move these around until it links up, okay? There you go. So now it's the whole image. I'm going to crop it again because it's cut off in a different place than I want it to be. I'm gonna move this around. Maybe I want those windows to be centered, whatever it is. I'm just gonna go like this and done. Okay, so there's my background. Um, if I click this again, you can also see that I can flip the image. So if I wanna turn it around for whatever reason, this is very helpful when you're using a graphic. So we'll come back to that. But if you, for some reason, need to flip a graphic around, you can do that. If I wanted to make it the upside down, I could do that. So now we're in uh, Stranger Things. So you can play around with it. You can also edit the image with um, all these different filters, okay? So let's now go down this rabbit hole, okay? So we've got a photo. We want to adjust the different stuff. Um, you can see that they give you a couple different quick options, but I like to come down to these filters because that's the world that we live in, right? We all love a good filter. So you can come into filter and see what they already have. That one's really pretty, I like that. That's fun. Afterglow, so you can play with these. Now you see how once you click it, now there are little uh, filter graphic that shows up. If I click it again, it's going to allow me to change how intensely the filter is applied. So, a lot of you guys that use Instagram and that kind of thing see this, right? Oh, zero. Um, you guys have seen this before, but that's your intensity of the filter. Now, if I click none and I want to change it myself, I can also do that. You do that by clicking, going back up to where it has the little few options here. And I'm going to click see all. Now, see all allows me to do whatever I want myself. I can change my contrast, I can change my saturation, I can give it a vignette, I can increase the vibrance, whatever you want to do. You can change that here. You can change the tone of the, the warmth tint. Um, so lots of different options with that. Um, I'm, and as soon as you, so I, I kind of played around with that. Just so you know, though, if I click into something, it takes, it's, it takes those all off and puts on the other filter. So um, just be mindful of that. You can't adjust it and then add an additional filter on top. Once you click a filter, those are preset, okay? So adjust is manual, filters is preset. Now scrolling down a little bit further in the photo section, here's your smart mockups. So I'm still in edit image. I have selected an image. I am on that image. I'm in edit image and I'm just scrolling through all the things that you can do to an image, okay? So smart mockups is another option. This is really cool for like my listing presentation. I did this where it looks like people are looking at my listing presentation. It takes literally my picture 
of my listening presentation and puts it on a computer. So let me show you. So you can just click whatever and it takes whatever you just designed and put it sit into these different options. So with smart mockups, you can make something on a computer, you can put something on a cell phone, um, cards. So if you wanna do a, um, a newsletter, you can make it look like it's a, there's a newsletter. You can do a magazine. You can do a lot of different things. Maybe you're going to not actually send out a, um, a invitation, a true invitation. You could do a smart mock-up. If you made an invitation for a first-time home buyer seminar, and then you put it on one of these things, now you've got your little graphic on there and you post that on Facebook. There's a lot of fun little things that you can do. And again, all of these are free. Um, if you want to say something cutesy, like a little quote or something, you can put it into a little um, frame here. Lots of different options with this. Um, T-shirts. All right. So there is your smart mockups. Now I'm going to undo that. So I'm going to click none and I'm going to click the back arrow. Okay. Frames, same kind of thing, but it's a graphic instead of a, um, instead of a photo. Okay. So frames would be good if you have like a presentation and you're trying to put like the home snap app, you could take a picture of your web page and then stick it in this frame and see how it's like, now it looks like the computer, like it would be like home snap with da 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 da, all right there. Um, different versions of that. You could show your app off, like get us get a screenshot of what your app looks like on your phone, put that in here. As soon as you upload the picture, which we'll get to, um, you could throw it on a phone. So there's a lot of different options that you can do with this. I'm going to undo that. <clears throat> well, it's just control Z at all. Okay. All right. And then duo tone. I'm not going to play around with these. These are pretty self explanatory. They're additional filters, but there's a lot of different options of colors. So here's all the different things you can do. Trippy is fun. Little, you know, again, fil filters, but um, kind of more artistic things. This is, they're just, they're just kind of fun. Um, Screen, slice, photogenic. These are kind of nice. They're still, again, similar to your other ones, but they give a little bit more of a, you know, whatever. So, and then you can see all these other ones. Um, there's a different things that you can put in, like once you add something, it'll show up in that section again. So maybe we do this here. Um, whatever you want to do, this would be kind of cool if you were trying to take a picture of someone's house and you wanted to turn it into a piece of art for them, get it framed or something like that. You could totally do that. Um, there's a ton of different like random filters and stuff additionally that aren't um, in there. You, once you add it once, it'll kind of continue to come up. Um, so and if all of these options aren't there, they're probably down housed because I have used these before. And so that's why they're showing up for me. Um, so once you kind of start playing with them, they'll, they'll start showing up um, more frequently. Kind of like my searches for the element section, um, how that was showing up. So, all right. So I'm going to delete that off and add, we've got an image on here. Some other things that you can do with the image um, and anything is you can change the transparency. So you can click this little grid button where it looks like a gradient. That's your transparency. And you can make it lighter and just in the background, what have you. So you can go as light as you want. Um, a good way to, you know, if you ever wanted to um, have something in the background, let's make this larger. Okay, say I want this image in the background but I also want my logo to be shown. If I go to elements and I click lines and shapes, I can add in 
this um, shape. Now look at this. I've added on a shape and it's come to the front, usually hides behind text, but in front of your other images, okay? But now my little swirl is gone. I liked my little swirl. So I'm gonna click this and I'm going to click position. So when I click position, I'm gonna say backward. Now I've got my swirl back, okay? So if you ever are missing something, just change the position. If I wanted to bring this image to the front, I would do the same thing and do front or forward. You can move it all the way to the front by clicking front, or you can just move it incrementally by clicking um, you know, forward, backward. Sorry, where do you yeah. find change the position? So yes, great question. So when I click onto this image, and it can be, you can do this with text, you can do this with any anything at all, <clears throat> any um, item that's on your screen. You're going to click that. And sometimes it's in this little ellipses. And I'm going to click more. And here is my position. Perfect. So here's Thank my you. forward. Yeah. To front, backward. Now say I wanted to align it to the top. I could click that. It goes right up to the top. If I want it in the middle, it goes right to the middle. Whatever you, you know, you can kind of play around with those things which brings me to my next one that I wanted to talk about. So we've shown how to put it on the page, how to um, put it into the position on the page layered that you want it to be. Now let's show where to, how you can actually align it. So you see these guides, whenever I click anything, any of the items, it gives me this, these guides. So if I wanted to move it up, it shows me, okay, here I'm in line with something. I'm in line with the middle of the top of the graph of the text. I'm down here, I'm in the center of the page. So you can see these graphics. You can also see, and I, I'll play around with this, I'll throw more text on and everything, but um, it gives you guides as to how close you are to another item. So if you have a lot of different text items, It'll show you the spacing, like all of these are 14 pixels apart. All of these are, you know, now you're in line with this row, like it shows you the guides. So dotted line means, see dotted line means you're in line with another item on the page. Solid line indicates the actual space that you're using. So right now, I am this, there's a solid line going down the center of the graphic. That means that my box that I'm currently moving is center of the, of the image. If I move it down, now I am center. I am both vertically and horizontally center of the image. So those solid lines are the actual whole design. Dotted lines are going to be um, another item on the page, alignment with another item on the page. Now, when I move around, you can kind of see there's an additional solid line box. Every one of your designs is going to have this where they have kind of the aesthetically pleasing or anti-crop, if you will, lines. So this is something that I personally use a lot. I like to keep all of my main stuff in the within this box. Now, sometimes I'll move it out a little bit, whatever, but this is a really good key to kind of keeping all of your stuff looking with clean lines because, you know, you're creating something and you have this box to stay in. So nothing is too close to any of the edges, kind of just a general guide for you. So moving this back to the center, one easy thing to do, uh, I have this layered. I want to have this house as my background. I want to have my logo showing. Um, I'm personally going to, even though this is centered on the page and this is probably centered as well, I'm going to slide this down because aesthetically, I would like this um, box to be a little bit lower on my logo. So I'm just going to scoot it down a little bit. And all I've done is clicked it and I'm using my down arrows. That looks a little more centered to me. I like it more. Now I wanna move that whole box and the logo and Yasmin Tinka all up. Well, how do I do that? 
I, I want to get it centered again, but how do I move them? I'm going to click with my left and I'm going to drag a box over all of the things that I want to move. Oops, and I didn't go low enough. So I'm going to try again. So I'm going to click off to the side and I'm going to drag while holding down the left um, mouse button or keypad, laptop keypad. <laughs> Um, I'm dragging over top of all of the things that I want to move. And so now I can see that my box is highlighted, highlighted, my YT is highlighted, my line swirl thing is highlighted, and my Yasmin Tanka is highlighted. So I'm going to now let go. And I can see all of these things are in this little box. See, there's, I can move this around. If I were to change it, if I were to move those dimensions, it's gonna move the whole thing, see? So I'm gonna put it back how it was, and then I'm going to grab it, and I'm gonna move it up. And see now, it has allowed me to have this entire thing moved all at one time. So now I'm back into the center of the image. In addition, if I wanted to make sure that I never lose that, um, the way it looks, again, I'm going to click this ellipses, and I'm gonna click group. So now forever and ever, it's always going to be one image. I can ungroup it so that I can move them individually again, but until I do that, it's all one, okay? So there you go. So now I've got this. Well, I kind of want to make this box lighter. Let's go to ungroup and Click this, I'm gonna change my transparency. So ellipses, here's my gradient, and I'm going to change that. Okay, so now you can still see the house behind. Maybe I make it a little bit, but you can very clearly see my house. So those are some things that you can do. I ungrouped it before I did that so that I did not make my logo transparent as well. I only wanted the box to be transparent, so I ungrouped it so that I could change just that. Now, if I wanted to regroup it, I'd do the exact same thing that I just did, right? Um, all right, so let's keep going down um, a few more things here before we um, start working into other uploads and stuff. So other things that you can add would be videos. So if I wanted to add a video, there's a lot of free videos on here. And um, so same thing, let's say that I'm going to um, bring this up to fill the entire image. Oops, that's okay. Eh. Come on, stop it. <laughs> Sorry, my internet is starting to get slow again. Bear with me. There we go. All right. So this is going to automatically go. Now, um, if I wanted to add audio, you can, I will tell you, audio is kind of limited in the free version, just being totally honest. There's only a handful of things that you can really use. I'll show you because you can do see all. And um, so they have these little options up here um, for you. Some of them, you know, if I do this, you can see a lot of them have the pro. So I can do, let's try happy. I can do a ukulele song. I can do happy whistling ukulele. Um, let's try this one. I don't know if you guys on the video can hear that, but there you go. That was actually really annoying. Let me not do that one again. <laughs> um, let's do happy birthday ukulele song. Oh, that is horrifying. Let's not do that. <laughs> um, do, do, do. Well, we might not have a lot. This is my point. We don't have a lot of options. <laughs> Safety net, indie pop. We're gonna try this one. Um, really quickly, can you guys hear my audio when I've been playing these? Let me see, actually, let's do share sound. Not much. Okay, what about now? 
because I don't want to hear that really creepy birthday song again. Um, let's click this one. So I'm going to click, again, is free. I'm going to add this one on here. There we go. Depends. Great. So now I have a song. Now, one thing to note is that is attached to everything. So if you are making a video, your sound is attached to the overall uh, creation. It's not just attached to this one page. Okay. So I, um, so say I was making this video, I'm going to come up here and we're going to delete this thing. Making this video. Um, and, um, or let's see, uh, if I wanted to search earth day, see how I have all these options. So we've talked about graphics but you can see all these little things here. So, you know, you click any of those. Some of them you can change colors on. I actually don't think I showed you this yet. You can change the colors on things by, not always, but sometimes. So if you click, you know, you search birthday, you click this image, um, you can change the different uh, things here, okay? So whatever color you want to do, you can type in certain colors. So if you wanted to try to type in like apple, um, it gives you color palettes. These are not super intuitive. It's literally like you can see this color palette happens to be called apple shine. It didn't just give me a bunch of reds. Okay. So just, you don't really necessarily have to use that. What you can do though, is um, going back to our design, our styles here. So design styles, if I click this, it's going to keep it in line with whatever, um, you know, theme that I have. So um, if you don't want to play around and specifically pick colors, but you definitely can. So let's go back to elements. So I typed in birthday. When I typed in birthday, I could then also go into photos and I could get photos. Um, this one's cute. I could do videos. So what about this one? We'll do that instead. And maybe you're making like a birth, like a client appreciation thing, you know? Um, you're posting on a former client's birthday, like onto their Facebook page and you're doing birthday. So I've put this on here. I'm gonna crop it so that it's a little more centered. Done. Okay, and audio we just looked at. Um, charts aren't gonna be applicable. I'll come to that in a second. Okay, so we have our little video. We're gonna hop down. So we were just on elements. We've done almost everything here, right? Because we talked about um, those two and we're gonna come to these ones in a second. So I'm gonna pop down to text because we haven't done text yet. So text, you can do a couple different things. You're going to click add a text box. You just want to get something on there. You can also do add a heading, add a subheading, add a text, a little body text. These are really just mostly about size. Um, you can see that they kind of have some pre done um, sizing and everything, but it's all the same little Canva sans. Um, and they were like bolded, some were bolded and some were not, you know? So you can either click add a text box, add a heading, whatever you wanna do, but they also have all of these little font combinations. So you can kind of scroll through here. Some of them, again, are the pro version, but you can actually create something similar. So if there's one that you see that you like, truthfully, you can pretty much create it for free. It's just gonna take a second. Um, so let's show both of those. So, um, Let's look at this sparkle. So I like sparkle. I also like um, shine. What if I want to do shine? Well, how can I recreate? Because that's kind of similar to sparkle. So let's click sparkle. 
And then let's scroll down and look at shine. Okay, so what's really the difference here? I have a glow in both of them and it's just really a different font and then repeated. You can totally do that. Like you'll just type in um, some sort of, um, maybe that red stencil to me. So I'm gonna type in stencil and it's gonna show me fonts that are stencil related. So you can search different things. Maybe you're doing like that. That's kind of funny because it's like a military and it's a sparkle, but you get what I'm saying. You can change to different fonts by looking up general ideas of things. Um, and it, this part is actually pretty good. Like they're pretty intuitive with it. Um, if you type in stencil, it's gonna get you something similar to stencil. You can see I just clicked one that was grayed out. And that is what happens when you um, are clicking one that's a pro, okay? Um, so again, you can see these ones here are grayed and have the little um, crown. So stencil is something you could look up. Maybe you wanna look up here, these options here, handwriting. So handwriting gets you a lot of different like cursive ones or um, so here's a calligraphy kind of one. Here's a general handwriting one. Um, you can do um, corporate was another one that I often use. And this gets you very clean line type stuff. <clears throat> um, it gives you your recent ones as well. So with this one, it's giving me recommendations. Sparkle. Um, let's do this one, or actually let's go back to the other one because I liked the original. <laughs> okay, so here's our original. The way that you can also add this, so what if I did the same thing? And then I just, now I know that one is called Moon Time. I'm just gonna click Moon Time. I'm gonna type in the word sparkle. Let's see how close I can get to this one. So this one is 123 sizing. So let's change this to 123. Okay. So I have sparkle, sparkle. But this has a different effect on it. So let's take a look at effects. I'm going to click onto this, the um, image here or the text box. And I go to effects. Here are all the different effects you can do. So shadow kind of gives you a little drop shadow you can change the different information with it so if i wanted to make it really dark i could if i wanted to make it really light i can um if i wanted to blur it so it looks a little um let me turn up my transparency so you can see that so it's a little fuzzier you see that you can change the direction the offset what have you lift puts a uh, more of a shadow behind everything hollow is going to um this is a bad uh, version of show. Let's do, there you go. So there, now it's um, an outline. Splice is an outline plus a drop shot, like plus it, um, the words kind of drop down a little bit. And again, you can change how offset it is, make it really offset. You can change the direction. I want it to be around this way, what have you. And then your color. So if I wanted it to be blue, I can make it blue. So let's undo that. All right, more effects. Echo is just kind of a gradient down. And again, if I want to gradient it to a different thing, then I'll do that. Put it back to that. Um, oops. So my other effects, I can do a glitch. This kind of looks like a little bit like a computer kind of thing. Um, neon, which is what this other one is here. And then background, um, pretty self-explanatory. All right, last thing that you can do with these is you can curve it. Um, so the way this works, you would change this. You can see the, the circle there. And um, you can change how, uh, how big the circle is, you see? So let's go back to neon and let's do none. Um, on the curve, oops, on the curve, you can also change the width of it. So if you're going around a certain thing, you can kind of use that as a guide. So if I wanted, actually, let's show, if I wanted to curve around this cake, 
I'm going to kind of get that even. And so now I feel like that's, that looks pretty good around that cake. So I kind of use that as a guide for that, okay? So let's do nine. I wanna try and get as close as I can to this one here. Moon time, all right, effects. So I can tell by looking at that one that I like that it is the neon. My intensity, I'm just going to change that. Oh, there we go. Now it looks pretty much the same, right? So the intensity light isn't much. This one, there you go. So if you ever see anything that you like, you can get pretty close to it um, by kind of playing around with the different effects that you have. Most of the time, the only thing that you wouldn't be able to do would be if it was like a specific font. So again, if you see one of these font combinations that you like, you can probably get pretty close to it by just playing around with the effects. I'm gonna show you how to do animations. So let's take a look at that. So animate, these are things that you can have come on here. Um, if you have multiple items, then you can have them kind of come in, but they're going to come in all at once. You cannot do something where it's layered, like I want this one, this one, this one. So if you're a former PowerPointer, um, like a lot of us were, um, you can't schedule it. So it's like, this is the first thing, and then this is gonna come, and then this is gonna come. It's all just going to come at the same time. It just will either come all together or it will be like each line of text going at the same time. Um, so let's show you what I mean by that. Circle, happy birthday. All right. So I'm going to change my font color by clicking this here. Black. I want it to be. Um, just playing around with stuff. All right, happy birthday. So if I click animate, I can make this one rise, this one pan, whatever you want. You see how now it says text animations, page animations. So I can have everything do one and that's gonna be the actual page or I can do my text. And again, that's gonna be um, per thing. So I'm gonna say swipe here or, or wipe, swipe, wipe. And I want it to be on enter. Both would be it would wipe on and off. And then on exit is just off. Okay. So I'm going to have you can do your, you can't do your directions unless you're um, the pro. So we're going to do, um, let's do pop. That one's fun. I'm going to do it on enter. And then on my birthday, I've clicked onto that. And I want this one to be, um, Let's do pan just for fun. Okay, so now if I come and I play this, let's see what we've built. So we have a video, we have audio, we have two different animations. Let's see it. There you go. All right, now you can change the amount of time. Um, so, oops, sorry, animation, pop. Um, so I've got this on here, got this one on here. Let's make our animation longer. Okay, so a uh, video, maybe this was only 3.2 seconds. Yeah, so if you had a longer video, you can make it longer um, or you could edit it down. So that was kind of a short video, I probably could have picked a longer one, but all right. So let's do, we're gonna move away from that one. Uploads is pretty self-explanatory. This, if you're wondering, this is just weird stuff because there's a, a fun little thing that I'll show you if I have time at the end. Um, you can type in like really random. This was like turtle horse something. And it like, there's this weird generator. I'm sure you guys have seen this online, but there's these weird generators where it like tries to guess like what you're wanting it to search for and it creates an image for you. It's very strange. Um, but so don't judge my uploads. <laughs> that was another video last year. <laughs> um, but upload files, obviously you can search whatever uh, or you can, you know, from your computer. But then um, once you've done that, you can also then like, so long as you've saved it, right? So if I type in profile, I know that's going to bring up 
my uh, photo that I use for everything, right? Um, here was a second version, you know, so I've got these saved as um, profile. And so you're able to search through all of the things that you've uploaded. So if I type in Postal Town, it's going to come up with our logo. Boom. Okay. All right. Um, going back to elements, I want to show the charts and those types of things. Um, it would be good for um, market updates or that kind of thing. So we're going to scroll past. We've done audio, video, tables. So you could build out tables and you just literally type in. So when you add a table on here, um, let's see, edit, delete row, move columns, um, you can type in. Table, I personally don't really use. Um, but if you find a, you know, a use for it, great. Um, charts is actually what I wanted to do. I kind of scrolled past it. So let's look at charts. These are some fun things that you could do if you are a big numbers person. So let's add a random one here. And you can change what this is. So this is maybe house one, house two, um, days on market um Chesapeake whatever this is and this is a stacked bar graph so this has like lots of different information in the in each right um settings you can have show labels show legend so if I wanted to put on here what these are so you can kind of play around with these I'm not going to spend a ton of time on this because um this is it's useful I don't know how much you guys will use it um, but you are able to put in like a Google Sheets to add your information or um, a CSV. So this is just kind of a cool thing that you can do. Um, other charts, line charts, um, pie charts. And if you want these little infographic charts, these are kind of cool. You can change what these symbols are. Um, fill items, total items. So, you know, nine out of 10 people, whatever. So those are just little fun things that you can play with. Um, frames. So this is where if you were building out an image, um, you can add these little frames and this is where you can throw a photo into. So let's go back to our um, uploads here. Let's do my profile again. And I want my image to be in a circle. Well, here's what I'm gonna do. If I were to click this image, it's just gonna show up on the page. But because I've added a frame, I can actually take this picture and drag it over top and throw it into that frame. And now it's in that little circle, okay? So that is what frames look like. Grid is actually um, going to take the entire image. I'm just kind of busting through the rest of this in our last 10 minutes and then I'm gonna get questions. So if you wanted to do a couple different pictures, if I click that, it takes up the entirety of the image. So this is like literally a collage, okay? Same concept, grab and drop over. With these also, you can change the spacing. So you see, I can make it seamless. I can make it big grids, whatever you want. There's that, okay? and. Coming down. Okay, good. We got through all that. So that is kind of the quick basics of Canva. Um, there are additional little things that I'll show you now. Um, so background. Um, again, I don't really use this, but you can kind of find little things here and there. I usually use the photos and then just make the photo my background because I, it is just as fast. Um, and you can search for whatever background you actually want. Emoji QR code and Bitemoji, we'll talk about it another time, um, just because that is um, something that we will cover in, in future ones to kind of play around with. So there's a lot more stuff here. Um, in another session, we're also going to talk about your content planner.
So this is um, like a calendar and it can help you um, come up with free ideas. It is got a, it does have a crown, but it kind of is a calendar that shows you what, um, what holidays are coming up and kind of gives you ideas. And that way then you can create a post, save that and then schedule it um, on your Facebook page. So um, I do want to show though, with the last couple of minutes here though, what if you're trying to look up something specific? So Valentine's Day is coming up. What if I want to do Valentine's, oops, <clears throat> if I could type Valentine's Day Facebook. So let's see what comes up. Valentine's Day animated social media. Perfect. Let's see what it has. And if I click this, it gives me a lot of different options. So here are all these cute little ones that if I hold my mouse over, it will show me what it looks like. That's cute. So I could literally just come in here. Let's do this one. Oh, that's adorable. Let's click this one. And I clicked it, it didn't have a crown. So I'm gonna click customize this template. And now I'm going to, I'm not going to really change anything. I like what it looks like. This website here, I could put um, love Christy Hall XOXO. I don't know. You could do that. You could put your website. You could do whatever you want. Um, but let's show downloads. So if I were to download this, you click share download. So because this has movement, it needs to be a video. So it's gonna suggest that. If I just wanted it to be an image and it's not gonna move, then I would do JPEG or PNG. PNG is gonna have your best resolution. JPEG, I just don't even use JPEG, but that's just me. Um, PNG is what I use nine times out of 10. PDF is what you're gonna use for your documents, um, for your listing presentation, for things that you're gonna be emailing. This is going to be your better option. PDF for print is fine. Um, the benefit for PDF for print is that you can actually select to have the crop lines. So if you get it printed, you can have those little marks so that when you're cutting it to size, it looks good. Um, and then GIF is another one you could do, short clip. Um, you could, it's just a lower resolution. So you see this one says 864 pixels, whereas when I had it set to video, it was. Um, 1080. So the difference between the two is not that big, but you can turn things into GIFs if you would like to do that. Um, so I'm going to say, do this. I'm going to click download. And then I would just upload this onto Facebook. So I showed you how to do a quick search for something. Um, but say I wanted to do something even more generic business card. Gives you a ton of different ideas for your business card. All of these, right? Find one that I like. Here's a money symbol, which means something on this has a paid element, just like it warns you, which you can try and change out using the graphic search and just put in one that's free in the place of it. Or you can pay $1 and have that. Um, so if I pick one of these, great. Say I start using this design and then I decide that I don't like it, this is where I'm gonna go back to that template. So if you've already selected a template that you're using, you can always add a different one at any time. So you would just come over here and you could pick a different one from this section here. So you can either search in the design itself or from the main page, home page. All right, so I'm gonna stop there. Um, I know that was a lot of information very quickly, but my goal with this video is to not have to tell you guys how to size things again. And <laughs> whenever someone has a question, I can just say, hey, go watch my video. Um, so I will go ahead and stop for now. Does anyone have any questions on what we just covered? No. All right. Not actually. I just have to watch the video again to refresh some stuff and 
keep moving forward, practice. <laughs>